It is April 30th, 1991, 9.09 a.m. And no, Jason, your eyes do not deceive you. It is, in fact, snowing out. Although it is officially spring, winter has not entirely left us yet. This is a prime example of screwy Manitoba weather. What's the weather like out there right now? I'm sure it's a hell of a lot better than this. Uh, and in case you're wondering, incidentally, what I'm doing up at a decent hour, um, I slept for about five hours last night. Uh, mainly because uh, I'm up at a decent hour, mainly because I'm starting school tomorrow. I'm taking a six-week spring session at the Collegiate, as I believe I've mentioned on other occasions. As you can see, the trees are budding, so one would wonder uh, what chance those buds are going to have thanks to this little turn of events. Same goes for the bushes just uh, outside the edge of the parking lot here. Which, as you can see, we're starting to grow, but who knows what's going to happen now. And how will my Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future videos fare in this screwed up, ridiculous, weird-ass weather. My incredible ice cream machine will probably do r rather well, as this is weather that it's right at home in. And what of my President's Choice Decadent Chocolate Chip Cookies tin? Not to mention my discarded Old Dutch ketchup-flavored potato chips box on the living room floor, and my brand new filing cabinet. And what about my Robocop poster? and all the junk in the top of my closet or my styrofoam model airplane or my Laura Secord egg holder or this old super big gulp cup on my living room coffee table or my lampshade or my peanut shaped coin bank or this out of date TV guide on the living room floor or this roll of fire fire file folder labels I'm in a complete panic my god what about my house keys will they rust what about these cracked eggshells with the two hairs in the bowl with them? I was really hoping to save that, but wh what effect will this weather have on that? And let's not forget my Beaver Bus Line's limited Selkirk bus schedule. I have to rely on that every day. That's the bus that takes me to school. Where will it end? Ah! Still April 30th. It's 11.35 a.m. So I guess obviously it's not going to end very soon. As you can see, it's minus one outside. Uh, the wind chill is 1300, which isn't too bad, but uh, there is, as you can see, quite an awful lot of it. Um, I don't know. It's uh, it's pretty windy out there, which is uh, you know I mean it's kind of a shame because uh, here everything was just you know starting to grow and become green and full of life and. Uh, and so forth all, all over again and everything and it was really nice out and it uh, was beautiful sunny weather and uh, well, it was shorts weather a lot of the time but now it's like the middle of winter all over again which is uh... it really pisses me off because uh... i need a lot of uh... lush green meadows and forests and so forth oops sorry just bang. i'm standing behind the tripod here doing the narration and i just banged it but I also need some winter scenes, but this isn't going to amount to enough to uh, be able to do a winter scene. Besides, I can't get the people out here uh, right away. So it kind of presents a bit of a problem. Uh, you know, I was kind of hoping that uh, everything would grow nice and fast because uh, one of my lead actors is coming out uh, in the middle of May in just a couple of weeks. Uh, and it would have been a perfect opportunity for us to do some shooting, except I don't know if this is going to clear up before then. Uh, hopefully it will, but I just looked at the forecast for the uh, for the next few days, and it doesn't look too good. Still, uh, it's warmer than it is today, but uh, not by a lot. Only up to about, I think the highest temperature I saw it's predicted to get up to is about 11. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Believe it or not, we actually needed this not long ago. But not today. Got the heat on today. Baseboard heaters. One in uh, uh, every room, basically. This is the living room one. Uh, there's also one in the bathroom, one in the bedroom, and one in the kitchen. 
And because there's four of them, uh, you turn them all on, the place gets heated up pretty fast, which is good because in a day like today, that's what you want. You may have been wondering about what exactly this is. Uh, you saw it in the opening titles for uh, uh, my third video letter to you, Volume 3. Uh, quite simply, this is, well, as it says there, you can see that uh, quite nicely. It's a video editing controller. Basically, you hook it up to, I'm sure you've seen them before, or at least heard about them. Um, it basically does the same thing as the big editor at the office, which is what I edit my, uh, my productions on. Um, except it's got a lot less features. Um, the editor at the office can hold 99 programs, whereas this one can only hold 8. A program, basically, you set up a, a shot, you tell, the, you tell the controller, you program in where you want the shot to start and stop and then you program that in and then you do seri a series of them and it uh, it runs through them in whatever order you programmed it in so basically it does the editing for you you just tell it what you want to do and then just let it fly it's a handy little device this particular one uh, as you can see it's just the uh, controller uh, I have to get an 8 millimeter VCR in order for it to be operational uh, and I also uh, have to get an adapter because it's not uh, compatible with my camera. That's an 8mm editor in case you're wondering. Uh, in the future, once I get that set up uh, all put together, I'll be doing all of uh, my video letters to you and to anyone else I send video letters to uh, with the editor so they'll be nice and clean. I'm hoping to do this one, Volume 4, uh, on the editor at the office or possibly if I get my editing set up uh, put together before then or possibly I might be able to just borrow an 8mm VCR from the office I'll do it then. Uh, this whole volume 4 is a bit of an experiment it uh, you know as you may have noticed I've been changing things around I've been making it a lot more fast paced and so forth even just this talking part instead of just having me talking I've been showing you different things. This is my uh, music keyboard it's a Casio keyboard uh, stereo. I'll pan over to the other speaker in a second. As you can see it has the, the yellow things there are drum pads. It has 12 uh, instrument sounds as well as 12 beats and you see those blue switches in the middle I'll just zoom in on them here. Those blue switches there as you can see those are for uh, altering certain parts of the, uh, the uh, drum beat and the bass chord selection on the uh, far right of those switches is for the accompaniment and each beat uh, selection has three different kinds of accompaniment with it it's a nice keyboard it's uh... it does the jobs i uh... i use it for i've used it uh... in some of my productions for example uh... uh the energy crisis solved the version you have i did the music on this keyboard uh, I did that not long after I uh, got this keyboard actually. When I did the original version of it I didn't have the keyboard so I just used music off of records and stuff. And then for the re-edited version which is what you have I, uh, I use that. And also the Terror of Red Rock Lake which is also the re-edited version I did the music on uh, on this keyboard. Uh, and I'm thinking of upgrading to a, a later model. When this came out it was $300. Uh, I think it still is. I don't know why. But uh, from, say, some place like the Yamaha, which makes much better keyboards, or anyone, really, uh, for the same price, $300, you can get one that's, that's professional quality. Um, so I'm planning to do that in the relatively near future. Um, so yeah, basically the two technical things I'm working on uh, getting in the near future are the uh, 8mm VCR, so I can do all the fancy editing and stuff here instead of having to get time at the office, which is kind of inconvenient because it's kind of out of the way. Well, it's not really out of the way, I mean, it's close by and everything. But it can be a bit of a nuisance at times because I can only get a uh, limited amount of time on the editor. Well, I mean, you work at uh, your uncle's place, so I'm sure you know what that's all about. Anyway, so I figured if I could get my own home editing kind of suite kind of deal, uh, you know, I, uh, I'd be able to do much better productions right here in my home where I can just, you know, do it whenever I uh, I have the time. Which is, um, which is the way I think it should be, you know. I mean, you shouldn't have to rush through something. This should look familiar. Yes, that's right. That's Video Letters to Jason, Volume 3. And no, that isn't my copy of it. It's uh, your copy of it. At the time of this recording, I haven't even mailed it off yet. 
Um, I don't actually have copies, like finished copies of uh, the video letters I've sent to you. I'm going to try to do that from now on so that I can sort of have the, uh, the whole story, uh, if you will, and so forth. Uh, mind you, I have all the raw footage. You may have noticed this in the uh, opening titles for Volume 3. Um, yes, that's right, videos for sale. I am selling off a bunch of my old uh, videotapes, my VHS tapes, uh, a lot of my movies and stuff. Um, well, actually, yeah, if you're interested in buying any of them, I'll tell you what, I'll send along a complete list with this video letter. Um, yeah, so basically I'm selling a bunch of my VHS tapes, uh, if you are interested in any of them. I can't guarantee that they'll still be here. Who knows, I may have found some interesting parties. Anyways, sales are going really slow. Basically, I'm selling off my VHS tapes because I plan to repurchase the, uh, the movies in the form of uh, Laserdiscs from my Laserdisc player, which is incredible. Well, I gave you that rather lengthy demonstration before. Uh, anyways, besides, I'm sure you know uh, how incredible Laserdiscs are. Anyways, so yeah, I'm selling off a bunch of my VHS tapes, uh, a good chunk of the collection, actually. Uh, so that I'll be able to repurchase them on Laserdisc. A, the picture quality is much better, the sound quality is much better, B, and C, the lifespan of a Laserdisc far surpasses that of videotape. Um, I'm sure you've seen this before, it's a Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, no, it's not mine. It uh, belongs to a friend of mine, he lent it to me. I've been playing Tetris and becoming extremely frustrated with it. I've been trying the highest, I've mastered pretty well the whole thing except for the final skill level. And it's been driving me nuts. But I've been bloody hooked on the game. You know, when I first saw Tetris, when I first heard about it, I was thinking, what a boring and dull looking game. How can everybody be so damn hooked on it? Until finally I sat down, I, fig I figured, what the hell. So I gave in, and I popped a quarter into a machine in the arcade, right? As soon as I played it, I, uh, I was hooked. And I guess it's just, it's just one of those kinds of games, I guess. You know, I mean, it's simple, but... Addicting. It is a very addicting game. Anyways, I've been hooked on it. I've been trying to uh, beat the machine and been having a blast at it. This is torture. Oh, come on. It can't be that boring. Well, there you go. I've uh, spoken to you about some stuff around here. The weather. Snow's still blowing around. The time is currently... 12.56 p.m. in the afternoon. Um, yeah. Well, remote control. <clears throat> Pardon me, I didn't mean to yodel. Remote control. Anyways, until next time, sayonara. This cannot be the end.